Okay, here's a disclaimer for all of you fuckers that are going to look at the dinographs and be like, oh, this one made the most power, I'm getting it. Watch the video, please. We did a lot of work on this, and not only for me, not for like my own ego or anything. Watch it so you guys can make an informed decision and see for yourself what intake you want to get. I think all three intakes we tested today are great contenders. I think they all perform very similarly. Uh, but please just watch the whole video, make a decision for yourself. Um, yeah, enjoy. Hello, and welcome back to our channel. I was told we needed an intro. So here's your intro. This is the Nissan Z that we have. What are we on, episode 10? Uh, Nine? Ooh, this is like, this is like 11? Yeah. All right, we're on episode 11. This is, this is our new Z, as you all know. It's not new anymore, we've had it for a while. We finally got a lot of goodies put on it. We're finally getting back to the performance stuff that you guys like to see. Uh, also, I have no choice because we got to get this thing at FL2K and we're registered in the 10.5 index and for some reason also the 9.5 index, which we're definitely not running in the 9.5 index. So actually, you know what? We could use a 9.5 index for like a PR run to break out of the 10.5. So we could run 10.5, 10.5, finish the 10.5 index and then just go boom, break out of the 10.5. We'll lose in the 9.5, but you know, whatever. Boom. boom in a good way. Okay, anyway. We did a lot of shit to it. Uh, I'm going to start in the engine bay and walk back. So right now it's full bolt on 93. We don't have uh, ethanol in it yet. Uh, we have, what are we missing? The low pressure pump we haven't done yet, right? And just the wiring for the flex. Okay, so. yeah. So flex fuel kit's not on. We have the fuel filter and a high pressure pump just because it was right there and accessible. Uh, we got the AMS intercoolers, which are beautiful, by the way. Um, you know, I, I, as much as I know it's a nice product, I wish I could just put a Racebox logo on it. I, I still tell people it's AMS, but it would be nice if I opened my engine van and didn't just show everybody else except Racebox. I'll put some fat Racebox stickers everywhere. Um, anyway, AMS intercoolers. We're still on stock intakes, which is what this video is about, but I'll get to that. Stock intakes. Uh, we got the AMS fuel line kit with the sensors here, but not hooked up. And then we got the filter. We got our spool FX200. Uh, we have the, do we, did we put the XDI injectors in this yet or are they still off the car? We will put our 2KCC injectors back in there after. Um, and yeah, and then we got Z1 caps because that's a mod. And then below what you can't see, we've got full down pipes. Uh, and then we got our four, four inch, is it four and a half or four? I forget. Our four inch single exit. It's a three, three inch true, oh, okay. The three inch Y pipe into a single four and then our four inch single exit. We got that on there. Um, and then we got the Z1 Sport uh, Akebono upgrade because this one came with base brakes. We put our two piece rotors on there. We got these beautiful custom forged wheels. The fronts look cool, but the rears are so nice. The best part about these wheels is when it's rolling, all you see if you're like behind the car into the side, all you see is the green lip and it looks so damn good. Um, and yeah, that's it. And we haven't done it. Oh, and then we did all our, all our suspension mods. We got not the feel R pro this time. We got actual double adjustable feel coilovers for drag racing, which hopefully will also be good for circuit racing because we're going to be running. Well, moonshine is going to be running this at Z nationals at Atlanta motorsport parks, like motorsports park. So that'll be fun. We'll have to redo the suspension for that. Uh, we got, we got, uh, ISR arms. Yeah. The thick boys that, that we got from Rudy. Thanks Rudy. Um, Rudy aligned it, all that's done. Uh, and the rear rear rotors are just regular OEM sport rotors. Or not, okay, it's hard because this is called a sport trim, but when I say sport, I mean like the sport brakes from the 370Z, the G37, the Q50, all that. With the, in this case, would be the performance brakes. Same shit. <clears throat> we got our gap cam, even though, even though it's slow. Am I allowed to say that? It's still slow, it's 90, eight seconds, 630 is not fast. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do today 
is we're gonna run some back-to-back -back dyno numbers. And the reason I'm doing this is, despite what I tell everybody, everybody wants to get intakes as the first mod. Always, like, oh, I got intakes. So if you're gonna get intakes, let's at least put some intakes on here and show you some back-to-back -back data and see what you're gonna gain with each of them. Uh, we, have the, we have the stock intakes. We got the AMS intakes for the Z, which are different from the AMS intakes that exist for other models like the Q50, Q60. We got the boosted six shorties and we got them in two variations. We got the regular stock math housing and the upgraded math housing. So I think we're gonna run it in this order just for ease of install. We're gonna do stock, AMS, and then boosted six stock housing, boosted six three inch housing. My predictions, and let's see if I'm right, is that it's gonna be the boosted six three inch, AMS, boosted six, two and a half for stock housing, and then the, the stock intakes. And you know, well, so what we're gonna do is obviously when you change math housing size, it does need a recalibration. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the timing, we're leaving everything alone other than fueling to adjust for the math housing. So the car's tuned on stock intakes, we're gonna make our power, we're gonna show you the dynograph, then we're gonna go install the intakes, adjust fueling, show you the dynograph, repeat, and that's it. Oh, and we do have the AMS heat exchanger on here. That is one other mod I forgot to mention. So, you know, it, it hopefully won't heat, it hopefully won't heat soak, uh, but it is what, 110 in the dino room right now. You can probably see my sweat. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So let's get started, see what it does. before I start and they're on 140 at the end of the pole. Uh, I don't think it's gonna get any better than that as we swap out intakes and it's gonna be hot in here and the engine's gonna be hot so we'll do our best but I think just the first pull is always gonna be the best shot for every single intake so that's what we're gonna do. First pull and done. I'm happy I have you to install in the seat and not wow. in the If you guys noticed in the time lapse, I was not there because I was sitting in my AC. You should office. see the intakes, they're drenched in sweat. So I let was... me tell you guys, yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> Can we... mm. No, no. I'm but... wiping it, that's no. gross. Well, I was melting. It's too hot. All right, things I like about these intakes. It's a sick design. Honestly, if you're gonna have a show car and you don't like the open intake look, this looks really nice. Like they did, they did an excellent job with these. Um, things I had to change, uh, everything's the same on the car. Didn't change anything on timing, fuel targets, and all that. The only fueling change we made 
is we changed the MAF scaling and a couple injector. Basically, it's all just adding fuel, but like we, mo <laughs> let me try and explain this. These cars are not only MAF based. The way they calculate airflow and load and fuel is like a bunch of different ways. And I don't want to get too technical, but it's partly the MAF, partly the boost sensors. Um, anyway, I have to make a few adjustments, but it's not people. People like to think that, oh, he's leaning it out. Oh, he's giving it this. Oh, he's adding time. No, didn't do anything. All I did was adjust the fuel scaling so that it can uh, supply the correct amount of fuel to hit the correct AFR targets that are the same as the stock intakes. Same timing, same everything. Let's see what it does. And we're doing the same with the booster six intakes, right? So you don't have to explain it twice. Yes. Okay. We're done with the AMS intakes. Um, so the next up is the Boosted 6 3 inch shorties intakes. I, don't know, I, I forgot the full name, I should know this, but yeah, that. So we're gonna unbox it because this box uh, has been sitting here for like what two months now. We haven't opened it, so let's do that. We already did the unboxing of the AMS intakes on the OZ, so. Might as well do the same with the Booster 6. So, AMS is a way bigger box as it has the, uh, it comes with their uh, air boxes, but these are just 40 intakes. So, they should just be, I'll look stickers for you. Um, your silicon tubes that goes to the turbos. It's like this, or oh, nah, no, like this, like this. Nice thick filters with the little stickers on there. And then clamps and then the map housings. I believe these are the modular map housings where you can just turn them into a turn them from a two and a half inch to a three inch map housing. If you don't have a tune, if you don't want to stock tune, you can actually run these intakes still because they're uh with the with this insert in there. It's kinda of cool to see. It just slides right in. This is the exact same uh, math housing as a well math housing size as a stock intake. So this does this requires no tune for you to install, and you can just drop this into your uh, completely stock car uh, Q50s or Nissan Zs and just run like that. Um, but of course, if you have a tune or if you plan to get your car tune, uh, you can actually just open it up, and then there'll be a uh, bigger math housing and that would actually get you more power or things, I don't know how tuning works, but yeah. So yeah, that's what that's why these were called the modular intakes. Just a map housing like that. Yeah, satisfying. Not really, but okay. Uh, they used to be very easy to install because there's no boxes and there's no mounts or anything. They just go right in there. Boosted six. 
on the desk. Since I didn't really install this all the way, it should be really easy to take off. Oh. Yanked them half of the sensor off. Should tell Roy this when he's like, oh, this is definitely copyright. Yeet. That goes back onto the turbo. If I can find it. Well, first we're gonna test the uh, the two and a half inch, I think. Yep, the stock map housing. Transfer the map over and make sure the direction of flow is correct. I hope. Put it on like this. I hope so. So that took no time at all, like what, 10, 15 minutes for these to be on. But since there's no box, air box or anything to do, just straight on and off. I mean, straight off and on. So yeah, we'll see what these will do on just the stock math housing size first. Welcome back. Chidong said I don't need a mic, so if you guys can't hear me or if my voice is muffled and bad, it's his fault. <laughs> we got cool results with the AMS. I was really, I, did you show them the dynograph yet? Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Well, you so, can show well, them well, Whatever, we can talk about it again. This is really cool data. We picked up about 10 horsepower across the power band and in some ranges, it might've been a little bit more, but it looks like just like a flat 10 horsepower across compared to the red line. Remember the blue line was just to demonstrate heat soak on a back-to-back -back pull in a dyno room that is hot as on. Actually, what's interesting is you can see that just on that one pull, I think, honestly, and this is a tangent, I think our dyno room is just badly designed and I think that's why a lot of cars in our dyno don't read well and then on the street they perform really well. Um, we don't have airflow in here. As you can see, it's all blocked off. Whatever air we get is whatever air comes through that door as we're doing a pull. And so I think without a good rate of fresh airflow, it ends up getting hot. And you can see these runs were within like two minutes of each other. The temperature in here, according to the probe, went up by three degrees. And humidity is about the same, whatever, 2% is like a you know, margin of error. But so, yeah, this was just to demonstrate how bad our heat soak is in this dining room. So pay attention to the red line. Red line was stock, orange line or yellow line is AMS, right? Again, all we did was adjust the math calibration to match the extra flow from these intakes. Now the extra flow is really seen up here. And I was talking to Jake at AMS and he gave me some cool data, um, which I'll try and overlay on here, but it shows the pressure drop. Uh, between stock intakes and the AMS intakes and they measured that it was about Half as much pressure drop on the stock on the AMS intakes versus the the stock intakes which results in boom more power More power nice. baby. Well, so now we're gonna do the boosted six intakes and The cool thing about these is they make a lot of really cool noises So the AMS intakes are closed They're designed to work with the stock air dam and everything um, And there's a whole argument about you know whether you want hot air intakes or not Personally for me, I love the sound of open filters and I really love the sound of the open filters that have the inverted cone shape right here. These make the best spoolie noises. So I'm very excited. Prosh is a good friend of mine. He was one of my first customers. He's been one of my longest supporters. Uh, and he also was like, bro, you never run my parts. So like, here you go, Prosh. I'm running your parts. I'm really happy that you make these intakes. They're awesome. Uh, our customers are very happy with them too. Um, and so yeah, I expect these to make somewhere in between the AMS intakes and the stock intakes. Is either these are the stock math housing. So we're gonna go back to the tune that we had previously, which is what we ran the stock intakes on. I know it's a little confusing, but just for ease of install, we did it this way because now we can just take out the math insert and it'll be good, which I think you showed in the install right before this, right? So yeah, so what we did this because it's just you. So I'm gonna flash back to the file that we had for the stock intakes. So this is really the identical file to that red line you saw up there, and we'll see how this runs. And then we're gonna switch to the three inch into three or take out the insert. take out the insert, do the three inch. We're gonna calibrate the math just like we did for the AMS intakes, and we'll see what it does.
For stock map housing, man, that's excellent. That's very nice. I'm very excited by that. Okay, so that was the stock map housing on the Boosted 6 intake. I've already finished taking out the insert on that one right here. So I've already loosened this up, so I'm just gonna yank it off. And look at that. Simple. And put this back on. I'm gonna tighten that, and then we're good to go for three inch intakes. All right, three inch intakes on. What are you saying? Uh, I'm just telling the. What did he say? Uh, what did he say? What do you think is gonna happen, bro? I mean, it's three inch. This sucks because I've always told people intakes don't matter and it's the last mod you should do. But like, <laughs> numbers don't lie, bro. I blame the I blame the DA. Intakes matter in high DA. Oh. That's what I'm going with. These were not hit at the same point and that's something that you know i'm going to take complete responsibility for we could have done better with that and just started at the same rpm the problem really ended up being that we were trying to get the car to not spin at some point even with pimp juice on it and so we were trying to lean into it so what i'm doing is i'm going to start these off approximately where each of these is already in boost about 3500 rpm but really you want to look at the mid-range and we're going to look at a lot of other data as well but right now what we're looking at is we've got rpm right manifold gauge pressure which is your boost pressure charger coolant temp charger temp engine load and ignition final right so what you're going to see with the stock intakes for example is we're starting off so you know we we you can see we hit it right around 3000 rpm right and as we proceed through i'll try and go slowly um, we hit peak boost right around 4200 yeah 4200 we hit 20.6 pounds of boost Charger temp is 115, charger coolant temp is 115, engine load is 2.3, and ignition final is 5.2, right? The 425 horsepower stock run, max power is made at 4,800 RPM, okay? And so this is at 42, so peak power was right here, 4,800 RPM, which is at 20.2 pounds of boost. Charger temp, charger coolant are still 115, which by the way, the AMS intercoolers are fantastic. So. If we have time in this video, maybe in another video, we'll show a comparison of stock intercoolers versus the AMS intercoolers. Uh, if this was a stock intercooler car, you would see the charge air temp rising a lot more through a pole than just, Anna's just staring, she's just flipping me off through the window over there, now she hid. 
um, you would see charge air temp rising a lot more. In this case with the intercoolers, what's happening is charge air temp is not rising as much. It's, it's staying kind of consistent. It goes about two degrees through a pole, but charge air coolant is, you know, so basically the heat exchanger is doing its job. The intercoolers are doing its job where it's taking the heat out of the, of the charge air and putting it into the coolant because the coolant is measured pre heat exchanger, right? And the charge air temp is measured post intercooler. So it's basically showing you how much did the coolant pull out and how much, you know, how cool did the charge air temp get? So when you see a consistent charge air temp, that's really good. All that to say the intercoolers are great. Uh, we're very happy with them. But anyway, back to this. So all of these graphs are kind of just to show you a quick overview of what the data looks like. Um, and then most of you are taking my word for it. We can actually make these available. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, we, I guess we can post them up. People can download these logs and we'll show this data for other people to view themselves if they would like to see. Um, now, so 1400 RPM. So this one, 425 horsepower. This one was 435 horsepower. This one was 440 horsepower. And this one was 439 horsepower. And we'll show the dyno graphs after. So when we're looking at this, what's gonna make power, right? If we're not changing the tune, so we didn't touch timing. We did not touch fuel targets. We did not touch boost targets. We did not touch wastegate targets. Top and bottom are, there's no change in in the tune on these, okay? So like this file and this file, the only change is we change into stock intake to boosted six with a two and a half inch with the insert, right? So make it the stock MAF housing. This, the AMS one, the only thing changed was the MAF scaling uh, and some injector compensations to get the fuel back on target. And then same thing here, on uh, the three inch was MAF compensations, get the injector compensations in, but there was a little more dialing in required for the, for the three inch shorties because the three inches is that much larger. So the AMS, I believe is a 2.75 inch. Uh, and this is obviously a full three inch MAF housing. So the three inch MAF housing is already maxing out the stock MAF sensor. So at that point, uh, there's a little more dialing in required because of the way these cars handle monitoring airflow and that kind of shit. I'm starting these out at 4,000 because 4,000 where peak torque is made. And then we'll discuss peak horsepower from there. So um, they were all actually, interestingly enough, they all made almost identical torque. Every single every single uh, run of these made the same torque. They made right around 490. I think the highest torque was a boosted six, two and a half inch that made 500 torque. And uh, it's interesting because that wasn't actually the one that was run earlier. The AMS and the three inch, we gave a higher spool time to. We started them around 2,500. As you can see from the graph, the, the boost builds up earlier here. The, the stock intake and the boosted six, uh, two and a half inch shorties, we started right at 3,000. So that's actually really interesting that even the cars, even, even when we ran them earlier and we started the run earlier on the three inch and the AMS intakes, it didn't make more torque. Um, so anyway, at 4,000 RPM, all of these uh, in comparison, so they're all at five degrees of ignition timing, right? 5.1, 5.15, 5. The point one is only because of the way the RPM lines up. Basically the way Ecutech does it and, and most ECUs do it, not just Ecutech, sorry, the way the ECU does it and most ECUs do it is they're interpolating between. Cause you don't have like, you don't have a table that says, okay, at 4,001 RPM at 4,000, that would be insane, right? You have, I believe on the VR30, there's, a, it's, there's a, a column or a row at 4,000 RPM. There's a row at 4,400 RPM. So it's interpolating between those based on your current RPM. So five degrees, 5.1 degrees, internet sluice, don't come at me. It's the same shit. Um, boost on stock is 19.9 pounds of boost. Uh, the AMS intakes at 4,000 RPM are 19.9 pounds of boost. Interestingly enough, the boosted six shorties at, uh, with the two and a half inch are at 20.2. And then again, the boosted six three inch are at 19.9, which strange um i don't think it means anything i think it's just you know 0.3 pounds is not massive it's we can look at it as we progress through uh which i think will will show more than anything um okay so charge air attempts are all about the same 115 115 uh 113 coolant 115 on the ams for the charge air temp the boosted six was a little bit cooler 111 charger coolant temp 113 charge air temp and then the boosted six with the three inch was 113, 113. All about the same. We're, we're really gonna start following it as we go along. So if you keep, oh, and then engine load is an interesting one. The engine load is what really changes when you, um, when you up the boost, I mean, not up the boost, when you change intakes, right? So stock intakes are 2.2 at 4,000 RPM, 2.24. 
AMS was 2.34, boosted six with a two and a half inch was 2.36, and then the boosted six with the three inch was back down to 2.2. Uh, but let's see how that changes as we go along because these seem to spool a little bit slower on the three inch shorties. So we'll progress to, let me see. Um, let's go to, let's go uh, 4,500. It's a good place. We can look at what boost is looking like at 4,500 on all these cars. 45, oh, not all these cars, all these runs, 45. And then the three inch. Okay, 44, I'll go with 4488. Okay, so at 4,500 RPM, uh, stock maintains 20.3 pounds of boost. Uh, the AMS maintained 20.5 pounds of boost. The boosted six are at 20.6 pounds of boost and the boosted six three inch are at 20.5 pounds of boost. So they're all identical. Charger attempts again are all very similar. Um, charger coolant, charger temp 115, 115. AMS is 113, 115. Uh, two and a half inch boosted six or 111, 113, and uh, three inch shorties are at 113, 113. So intercool is putting in work. Charger coolant is all about the same. So it's got the same cooling capacity. We give all these a fair shot. Uh, again, ignition finals, 5.6, 5.7. Engine load, 2.28, 2.44, 2.4, 2.27. It's very interesting to me that the boosted six, after dialing them in, the engine load comes down. Uh, compared to when we don't when we don't dial in the the engine load on um, Well, we don't dial in Rather we don't make math scaling changes for the two and a half inch, right now. Here's a real interesting part So if you look at all of these right so boost starts dropping off uh, it's down to 19 um, 19.5 at 5200 on the boosted six uh, and remember we didn't change anything uh, The boosted six three inch the boosted six uh, two and a half inch are a little bit lower at 19.4. Uh, and then the stock. Oh God, what did I do? Oh no. Oh, interesting. You can zoom like that. Cool. I learned something. Uh, at 5,200 on the stock, we're down to 19, 18.9. And on the AMS ones, we are at um, 52. We're at 19.3. So they're all, they all start to taper boost a little bit differently based on, I guess, how much they flow um, or how much, yeah, I guess how restrictive the intake is. But the interesting part is you see right here, you see this blue line, that's engine load. So some of you are familiar with tuning your cars or reviewing your own logs. You'll notice a lot of times when you change things with the, with the intakes or a lot of times even injectors, which require some, some fueling compensations, you'll see this engine load drop. This can be tuned out. It's not something that we have to leave on there. Uh, and usually we do tune it up, but it's interesting to see that with the stock math housing, well, the stock math housing size, the boosted six intake still result in this, in this uh, load drop. And the reason for that is that this is the point at which the calculation for engine load changes in the ECU. And if you recall what I said earlier, how the car uses the math, it uses a combination of the math, the boost sensor and some other shit to calculate engine load. This is that switchover point. So you see it drop, right? And at that point, um, let's, if your fuel target, so the axis for a lot of the, a lot of the tables in, in, in the tune, uh, you know, fuel targets, ignition targets, um, torque targets and other, other things are all one of the, one of the, the X axis is engine load. So if your engine load drops into a cell where your timing changes or whatever, this can lead to a lot of knock or whatever. In this case, because it's still above two, um, it doesn't matter because it's targeting the same fuel target, same, um, same ignition timing, but so we're all the same here on the stock intake. We picked up one degree of knock, which is why the stock intake is at 6.4, whereas everybody else is at 7.4, 7.6 on the ignition. Um, and now if we keep going, so let's go to, so peak power on these cars is 5,000. And that's right around where this actually drops, right where this car made peak power on the boosted six, two and a half inch shorties is when we saw this engine load drop as well. And that was at 19.9 pounds of boost. Let's fast forward to right around 6,500 when, you know, that's, really where these cars die off. Uh, and you know, really we shift the Z a lot sooner than that, but even, even a Q50 would die off around 65. Uh, we ran these out to seven just cause I like hearing the car bang the limiter. Honestly, that's the only reason we do it. It sounds good on video. Um, and so that, you know, you got all the data captured so we can do this where we're comparing them with all the same data. 65, this one, uh, we're zoomed in a little more here. 65 and 65. Okay. 
So here you can start seeing that the charger coolant, I'm pointing here, but I guess I can point here too on the screen recording. Charger coolant is starting to go up, you know, so here on the stock intakes is 124, on the AMS intakes are at 122, on the boosted six with the with the two and a half are at 120, but we also started like about two degrees lower, so that's about right. And then the three inch are at 122. So they're all performing the same charge air temp, 118 on stock, 117 on AMS, 115 and 115 on both boosted six runs. Engine load is all about the same. The AMS intake maintains engine load, and that's really interesting. Um, I think that that goes along uh, with the data that that Jake was showing where they're seeing less of a pressure drop. And so the car is actually maintaining more flow. Uh, and you can, the boost is about the same on all the upgraded intakes. The stock intakes are falling off hard, 13.5 pounds of boost. AMS are at 14.2, boosted six, two and a half, 14.1. And then the three inch shorties are at 14.4. And then ignition is still the same because the knock, the one degree of knock that was pulled on the stock run has recovered at this point. So it's 11.6, 11.7, 11.8, 11.8. And that's at 6,500 RPM and that's on 93 timing. Uh, some of you might notice this is conservative timing. Uh, it's not, not so much conservative as it is that we have charge air temp. I mean, okay, I, I would say that's actually conservative timing. I've pushed cars a lot harder, but 93 sucks, especially when it's hot outside. That's the data, all right? So now just to appease you people, I'm gonna show you the AFR target so you guys can see that I didn't change anything on the AFR targets either. I am dropping out ignition final so you can see AFR target bank one, uh, AFR target bank one, where is it? AFR target. Okay, so this is something actually that, that's worth noting. Because I promised not to change any of the tuning, right? With the AMS intakes holding load, the top end was actually running richer because I was targeting 11.2 because it's in a higher load cell versus every other intake, the load cell was dropping. And so we started targeting high, it goes up to about an 11.7 target uh, towards red line. But that's out of the peak power. And, and even, even with this, the AMS intakes actually held top end. So if I had adjusted that, it probably would have kept a little more top end, which shows that the AMS intakes for being 2.75 inches really do perform um, exceedingly well. Um, now let's get, to the, let's get to the dyno graphs, right? So stock. Second stock run back to back showing heat soak. We realized that our dining room sucks. Then we ran the AMS, 435, right? That was a good run on the AMS. Then we ran the boosted six, two and a half inch. Boosted six, two and a half inch with 440 and 500, right? Then the boosted six, three inch, and we got uh, this run. We had two degrees of knot because we were heat soaked. Then uh, we tried to cool it down. Didn't matter, we we're still heat soaked. And you can see actually the temperature was actually about the same in the dining room. Uh, between the AMS run and the boosted six run, but the car was just not cooling down. Like we could not get those charge air temps down below 120, 125 when starting a run. Uh, and we opted that we didn't, we, we didn't want to use data. And then sometimes we would run into it where it would look right. Like the charger temp was like 113, coolant temp was 113, and then we'd run it, but immediately it would spike. And it was just showing that even though the coolant temp was reading a certain temperature, it was not an accurate statement. And so, we kept running it and then we just decided to wait. So finally, we ran it uh, towards the end of the day and dining room temp was about four degrees cooler, closer to what it was on the stock runs, uh, but humidity was higher, so offsets it, I guess. The STD correction is still 1.06. Uh, actually, all, all aftermarket intakes were corrected at 1.06. The uh, OEM intake was at 1.05 correction, but that's making up for the humidity and temperature in the dining room shooting up. Um, I guess if we had a 1.06 correction, because it's so on the cusp, maybe the stock intakes would have made like closer to 430, but it's still otherwise is showing an increase with the aftermarket intakes, which when I went into this, I said on stock turbos, intakes don't matter. So I recant that statement. So uh, I'm gonna close out all of these runs. I only kept these up to show you that, you know, this is this is how long it took us to get an accurate run on the booster. So that, that the graph you saw previously not the dynograph, but the data that I was showing you, that was from this 439 run. You can see the temperatures were all in line versus when we ran all of these, the temperatures were not. The charger, cool, and charger temp. And that was, we were only looking at charger, cool, and charger temp because that's what matters for power. That's what the ECU pulls timing based off of. Um, that's, you know, what causes knock, that sort of stuff. So let me get rid of the other graphs. Red is stock, green is AMS. Uh, Orange is the boosted six 2.5 and the purple is the boosted six three inch. 
So you can actually see that after about 5,000 RPM, the boosted six three inch and the boosted six two and a half, they have almost identical power curves. If you look here, uh, you can follow along. Yeah, there's some oscillations. Also the bumpiness at the top right here, that's what happens when you run an ET Street R on the dyno. They wobble like crazy. They're balanced, they're not out of balance. That's just how, if anybody who runs on drag radials know, once you get up above, what you say, 110 mile an hour, that's when they start kind of getting scary on you and wiggly on you. And that's what you're seeing on the dyno here is they start moving around a lot. Also, it could be so dials messed up. Our dyno is also shit. Uh, but I'm gonna show the cursor here. Can I show cursor? Yeah, show cursor. Okay. So this shows a lot, but you wanna look. So up here is power numbers, down here is torque numbers, right? So right around, so this is, let's go to 6,000. Um, so this is the, the, the top end, right? Top end is where the intakes really make a difference. So stock was 380, AMS was 397, boosted six was uh, 401 on the two and a half and 406 on the three inch. And the three inch actually maintains, if you look here, it's maintaining a good, a good bit of power above the, about four to five horsepower more than the two and a half up top. Uh, but the peak numbers, which was at right around 5,000 for all of these, stock was a little bit earlier. Stock was at, uh, 48, but let's go to 5,000 because that's where all the other intakes peaked. At 5,000, stock was 424, AMS was 435, boosted six, uh, two and a half was 439, boosted six, three inch was 438.66 within a margin of error. So the boosted six, three inch and the two and a half perform almost identical. The interesting part is the boosted six, uh, two and a half, they spooled a lot better than any other intake we had on here. So if you look at it, they, or maybe it's not the spool, they just made more power down low than any of the other intakes. So if you look at it all the way through, uh, they're just higher all the way up until about peak power and then they all converge. Uh, the AMS intake tracked identical to the boosted six three inch intake almost at the start. Uh, it was a little bit better uh, on, the, on the low end, which we did find with, with the AMS intake in general, uh, even just how we felt what the car was driving, it just felt a little more responsive. Uh, than the other intakes uh, and you can kind of see that like it it spools up and kind of holds whereas you can see the boosted six three inch that we started also at two and a half or 2.5 k rpm it had a little uh, it was a little bit less up until right around 4500 but really none of you should be racing your car below 4500 anyway so conclusions from this I, I know I talked a lot I hope you guys were able to follow and I hope that the editing makes this make sense um, I was reluctant to do this video because I sometimes feel like when I put out data, um, you know, people will try and nitpick at the little things I'm saying rather than look at it uh, as a whole, right? And what this represents on a whole is that contrary to what I said, intakes do matter. Uh, and they actually provide quite a bit of benefit. Now, I do want to I do want to clarify, though, because I, a lot of our customers are going to be Q50, Q60 customers. AMS does not yet have the 2.75 inch intakes like they have on the Z on the Q50, Q60. Uh, I look forward to them presenting that because I'd love to test the Q50, Q60 one. Uh, but for Q50, Q60 customers, you're really mostly interested in the boosted six numbers because those are the same intakes on the Z and Q50s. Now, having said that, that's a good gain. You're gaining on, on AMS and the boosted six, you're getting about 10 horsepower across the power band. Uh, the boosted six, two and a half really outperformed what I thought they would. Uh, I was not expecting them to perform as well as they did. Now, that was one of the cooler runs. So, you know, I could say that maybe we didn't give the AMS or the or the Boosted 6 3 inch as fair of a shot, but it was a two degree difference in charger coolant temp. I hope, you know, you internet investigators and, and armchair tuners can forgive me for that. Uh, we tried our best with our dining room to get the temps as close as possible. Um, Again, it was very interesting to see the intake air temp spike on the on the boosted six two and a half inch versus every other intake that we that we logged. Um, ambient temps were about a, a little bit different throughout the day, but uh, STD correction stayed the same. Um, I thought the boosted six three inch would do better, but my thoughts on that are that we're on we're we're not really tuning anything right. So the other thing that comes with there are more gains to be had here when you adjusted, like for example, the AMS intakes, right? If I had gone ahead and adjusted the fuel 
uh, fuel targets so that it was targeting uh, a, le a slightly leaner instead of 11 to 11.7 up top. You probably would have seen above uh, here. Let's look back at that graph. Fuel target started going up right around 6,500 RPM, right from 11.2 and onwards. So you would have seen uh, probably from the top end right here where every other car is kind of, well, the other intakes, I guess, kind of jump up where you see the deviation right here with the AMS intake and the two boosted six. That's because the fuel target for the AMS intake stayed at 11.2 versus the boosted six and the stock were all climbing to 11.7 because of that engine load drop. Um, so all that to say, if we had fine tuned other things other than just MAF scaling, um, we probably could have extracted more power out of each of these intakes, but that was not the purpose of this video. I wanted to kind of just show, hey, will dropping in intakes increase power? And it does, right? Uh, the easiest one here is obviously the boosted six 2.5 inch with a MAF housing. You drop that in, but I do suspect that after looking at that engine load drop, uh, which I was not see, which I was not expecting on a, on a two and a half inch intake, uh, you some cars might need a you know fine tuning for the boosted six two and a half inch, um, but either way, I think any of these intake options are a great choice. They all make great power. Uh, I wouldn't pay so much attention to the peak numbers. Uh, like the 435 versus the 440 versus the four, yeah, versus the 440 and 439, because up top, they're all identical. Above 6,000, all of them perform the same. And the low range, they all perform the same. Right here in the mid range, um, that's peak power. Sure, that you're going to feel that five horsepower, but I don't think it's a fair assessment of the AMS or the stock intakes really to do that with the hood open on a dyno where there's not airflow being run through the air dam. Uh, I think Alex said that he wants to try some 60 to 130s on the street. If he's willing to do all put in the work, I think what we'll do is we won't test all of them. What we'll test is the boosted six, two and a half and the AMS intakes. And we'll just run the two and a half, do a 60 to 130 and then immediately come back, swap out the intakes and run the AMS and let that air dam really, you know, do its job. And then we'll compare data again. We'll try and start again at the right charger coolant temp so that it's as close of a, as close of a comparison as possible. Hopefully that makes it in this video. If not, we'll release a follow up video. Uh, my personal favorite. The boosted six, two and a half, man, they sound so goddamn good. Did you find the three inch sounded any better? About the same. They, 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 they sound, they, well. yeah, that, man, I just love, I love that inverted cone sound. I yeah, love sound. open filters. You know, I have a turbo car. My Audi has open filters. I want everyone to hear that I have turbos. I'm a racer like that. I don't like blow off valves because they cause problems. If they didn't cause problems, I'd put blow off valves on Q50s, but I hate dealing with boost leaks and shit like that, especially when I'm remote tuning. Um, yeah, that's my conclusion. I think this was this was a cool uh, a cool comparison. I think it it makes for good content, honestly, for the YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't talk too much, um, and I hope that this provides some good data. It convinced me, someone who didn't used to believe that intakes, you know, uh, intakes can help with power, uh, to saying that it does help with power. One final note on the on the boosted six three inch. I think the reason it made the same power as a two and a half is that restricted by the turbo inlet on the stock turbos. I think if you upgrade turbos with larger turbo inlets, you will see more of an increase because right now the restriction is at the turbo inlet, right? Um, so I think the Z1 still uses the stock inlet too because it can work with stock intake. So you probably wouldn't see much of an increase on those unless you ported the inlet or something, but you would see a, a much more of an increase on like a full frame turbo. Uh, and I, I don't know if, I think AMS is probably gonna release their turbo with a, with a larger inlet, and I'm excited to see that. So the boosted six will shine there. It will shine at higher mass flow rates. Uh, so obviously on more boost in general, uh, I think a three inch will help. And we've seen this on other cars where, you know, going from a two and a half inch intake to a three inch intake on like a pure stage two car, uh, people have picked up 20 horsepower, but that's also all with tuning changes. So I don't think this means that the boosted six are not worth it. I think the two and a half and the three inch are the same. And also I think he sells it at the same, same price point. Um, so I would just get them and then remove the inlet and see what you do when you're on a, on a bigger turbo. But on a stock turbo, you can run the two and a half, no problem. Um, I think on E, we usually target a little more boost too. We're not, we're not as timing or boost limited, so we could turn it up. Um, yeah. I like the AMS ones because they look good. I, I'm, so I'm kind of torn because I like the sound, but I like the way the AMS ones look. I almost wonder if I want to run the AMS ones when we go to car shows so people can see them and then run run the open ones so I can hear them. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think you can't go wrong with either choice. The the AMS ones are, what did you think about install quality? I think the they're both pretty easy to install, right? The AMS one takes a little bit longer because you gotta yeah, put the covers on. Yeah, the covers and then the, the mounting for the covers. Yeah, the mounting for the covers. It's more, the Boosted 6 are open filters. They can kind of move around and stuff. Uh, so they're a little more flexible. Um, the biggest thing about the AMS one versus the, the open filters, uh, filter ones is when you run an inner show or anything, uh, you can't run, like our last city, uh, we can't yeah, run the box. We're, 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 yeah, we're going to have trouble. We're going to try and run it around this time and do a better a better install of our inner chiller, but we might have to end up running the open filters just because it's the only There's way to no do it. Way to mount a big hose through the so if you have shit around there, the AMS intakes might be hard to mount, but they look so damn good. Like I love the idea to put that little clear opening to see the filter. It just looks cool, man. And it looks very OEM. The boosted six do look, you know, they look like tuner intakes for lack of a better word, right? Um, but yeah, I think all three of these intakes are great. Uh, if you guys want us to test anything else, if you have criticism, if you're like, hey, I don't think you did this right. If you want to see more data, um, you know, comment. Uh, I'm always I'm always willing to share more information. Um, I try to do my best. Again, we're a small shop. You know, I'm sure we have a lot of customers and all that, but we're not, I don't have like an R&D facility. I don't have all the fancy uh, data analytics software, data acquisition hardware. Um, I'd love to see other people do this, do this kind of information so we can provide more information to the community, but intakes do help. I'm really happy AMS released an intake with a 2.75 inch uh, diameter because it's, it's showing gains. Um, I don't have regular AMS intakes to test for the Z, otherwise I would have tossed those in there to show you a difference. Um, but I think AMS really says test data. So I think they, they show like what, six or seven horsepower gain on, on the regular ones on the queue. So intakes do matter. I take back what I said. They make cool sounds and they help a lot. The major difference is honestly all top end. This is where you see everything deviate. So red is stock again, right? So right after like 4,500, 4,600 makes a huge difference. And that, that's really the power band that you're gonna feel. So do intakes, they're a worthwhile upgrade. And then get, get a tune form. And you know, with optimized tuning, you could probably see more gains and it might be different. But again, that was not what I wanted to do here. I wanted to just drop in, change math scaling if needed, see what the cars do. and. This is what this is what it did. Thanks for watching. Look like that for the turbo. Out. I think that's how that will mount. Something like this.